All right, my name is Ali. I'll be doing the Next Generation Lending Networks, uh, focusing on the company called The Lending Club. I'm gonna try to make this quick. <laughs> I got cut off by the five minute mark uh, a couple of times before. So I think Bay Boomers are an overlooked opportunity for digital banking. Uh, the Lending Club does business exclusively online. They don't have any physical locations. Um, there's a big market, 82 million Bay Boomers out there. They are the least amount of people to be online doing banking. So I think this will really help the lending club add their add to the revenue base. They have their fears of banking. Uh, they didn't grow up with it in their schools. So they're just a little bit more hesitant to use online banking. But there's, you know, there's still a good client base to actually have. Uh, we should be getting into the reasons why later. Um, in terms of businesses, it's really good for businesses to have an online presence as well as a brick and mortar. Uh, location as well or locations um, just by having one alone is not really enough to um, increase the revenue so i think they should really do both the brick and mortar stores and the online presence as well um, i'm going to talk about the satellite stores with the banks a little bit later but basically um, i think they could do like a small office within supermarkets so that they could have um, the older generation come in, have a face-to-face -face meeting with people, and get them online, on board, and using the lending club services um, as soon as possible. Um, Baby Warrens have started to get more online more recently, but it's still not a large demographic, so I think this will really uh, turn up their client base by um, adding these physical locations. There's more, or the older generation between 60 and 69 have been targeted by scammers, so they have a right to be more weary and apprehensive of it. Um, they were in a small business. They've been still building businesses. They have more, more education, more experience to run their businesses versus the younger people. Um, during the pandemic, their debt had increased um, versus the younger people, which actually had their debt reduced. The big challenge is that even though the banks did this first with the two different types, of, of stores, the small stores versus the big traditional standalone stores is the small ones were virtually being used as ca check cashing stations instead of actually utilizing all the banks services where they make more money off. Of. Um, again, it's kind of the same slide. Um, again, the, the small in-store places were cheap to build, easy to staff, but they just weren't really being utilized like, like they really should have. They end up cannibalizing themselves with the traditional banks versus the in-store locations. Um, so a lot of the banks actually ended up getting rid of the of the in-store supermarket locations because they were not as profitable versus their traditional banks. The lending bank doesn't really have that issue because right now they're 100% online and they don't have any brick and mortar stores. So having a small store is still ben is more beneficial than, than doing just online um, uh, having an online web presence at all. Um, here's a, a few pointer, a few tips that would make the in-store bank successful. I'm going to go over that and just skip to my my conclusion. Basically, the lending club small stores would be a success because, like I said before, the traditional standalone banks they would not be cannibalizing each other. Um, by adding the small store locations, they can do like a low level staff. They don't have to be high powered executives because they really just have to set up computers in there to help people get online and actually go through the process and have someone to put a face to their name. I think that would be um, the biggest help to adding revenues to the lending club. Thank you.